You know, as the CEO of the startup, I know you're probably first asking yourself, if you're the CEO, why are you out here in a cube farm? You know, my office is still being created, okay? A multi-billion dollar building doesn't just get built overnight. Okay, and second off, as the CEO, you know, I have to be the best at the Vim moves. And today I'd like to share with you some good Vim moves, especially when it comes to vertical editing. Now, if you're not familiar with the series, the blazingly fast Vim series, check out this previous one on horizontal movement. But today we're going all vertical. But first, I'd like to say thank you. As CEO, the 100,000 subscriber plaque means a ton. And if you're not subscribed, well, you're a loser. You're not even a part of the original 100,000. What are you going to do with your life? How when I get the gold one? I still go, I wish I would have subscribed before a million. This is why I drive a Plowgini and you're still over there in that Corolla. You don't have commitment. Two quick things before we get started. First, get used to relative line numbers. Honestly, it'll make your life a lot better. And second, get used to D and U. I know at one point I used to recommend not using these because they are disorienting. But once you get over the control D U jumping disorientation, it's pretty great. Especially when you're searching for code you know the shape of, but you don't know how to search for it. I always kind of do this where I either search to the point where I need to be if, I do, if it's not within my viewport, or I jump by half page if it's not with my viewport and I don't know a term to search for. And sometimes I even even use it just to jump within here when I don't really need to be specific where my cursor needs to be. I just need to go up. Like I want to go up to the next item. I know it's slightly above me. I know if I jump up by a half page, I'll approximately be where I need to be really low overhead jumping. All right. So now that I'm there, I want to be able to remove out this config and create an object in which I can reuse. So how I used to do this is I'd do something like this. I'd F over to the squirrely brace, V percent sign D, capital O, const data equals paste percent sign A colon, right? You see what I did there? I just kind of grabbed it out, did those things. And even though this really worked well in specifically this situation, the thing I didn't like about how I used to do that is that I have to be on the line with the squirrely brace and I have to be able to F jump to the squirrely brace. So let's redo that one more time, but let's do it slightly different. So if I'm right here, this already works, but I can go like this, VA squirrely brace. Now notice it highlighted the whole thing plus the squirrely braces. Then I can do the DO const data equals paste percent sign capital A semicolon. Hopefully that makes a bit more sense. And the reason why that's awesome is if I jump four down, I'm within the item. So instead of first going up, then jumping forward, then highlighting it out, then say pressing something like S to delete the entire thing. Instead, I can just simply go DI squirrely brace or more so DA squirrely brace to get rid of everything or CA squirrely brace, of course, which will get rid of everything. And now I'm in insert mode. All right, now that I have the data plucked, all I gotta do is go six down F over A squirrely brace dot, 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 data. I don't know why I put uh, things way out there, but there we go, move it back in. Notice that I use the equal sign, equal sign, auto indents based on the rules. I use it all the time. You can even do it with motion. So equal AP will align an entire paragraph like this. Check this out. So I'm gonna move those two out of there. I'm gonna go equal AP, moves everything back based on a paragraph. Paragraph is contiguous text. So at this point, I'm simply gonna go down. I'm gonna do a little YI squirrely brace. The reason why I didn't do it up here, YI squirrely brace gets the entire function. I don't want the entire function. So let's go 13, ah, 13 down. Uh, YI squirrely brace, four down to get inside of here. VI squirrely brace, paste it, capital A to go to the end of the line in insert mode, comma, enter, height, 30, another comma, V or Y, I, squirrely brace, seven down, V, I, squirrely brace, paste. Look at that. I've done the same thing twice. Awesome. I got a little extra white space, so let's just get rid of those things. I can now jump up by paragraph because it jumps to the white space, which is rather convenient. And there we go. We've just reduced that bit of code fairly quick. Now, I do get this question on every single video. Why don't I use easy motion? Let me just answer it for you now, which is I am just not a fan of something that removes the Vim motions, meaning that I don't I no longer navigate by things that are going to just work with Vim because, you know, I don't edit stuff often on servers, you know, but once a week I'm jumping on there and I just like to be as fast as possible with the defaults. I think it's usually a pretty good way to go. That way, if I have to use, say, IntelliJ, or I have to use Xcode, which actually just a few years back, I had to use Xcode for like three weeks to do something for the Apple TV team. And that was really, really hard, but they had a Vim plugin that mostly worked. And so I could fly fairly fast. And so that's generally my recommendation why I never use something like Easy Motion is I just wanna always be able to use any of those other editors fairly well. And of course, if you see how that function is stuck up there, that is NeoVim 
tree sitter context it is a plugin it's really really nice because if you have relative line numbers you'll notice that it says 18 so i can just press 18k and i'll jump up to the definition of the function which let me show you kind of a cool trick if you're in a function and let's say you want to delete this entire function what i used to do is do this i used to press two up capital v f squirrely percent sign D. You probably recognize that from earlier, huh? I know you did. But what I do now is I go VA squirrely capital V to turn it into line mode. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let me go back to non-line mode and jump up to the top. You'll notice that I'm not highlighting the top of that. I'm only highlighting to the parentheses. So if I hit it with the shift V, it'll get it all. And then I can do a D. Now, some of you are probably asking, whoa, wait a second. How did you do that cursor jumping around while in highlighting mode? Oh, will transfer your cursor to either side. So I can go down here, go down once, go up here, go here, then I can jump back and forth. Really cool thing to kind of have, especially when you're selecting and moving around. All right, so we're about to go blazingly fast. I want to take all of this and put all these four lines into an array. So what I'm going to first do is I go YAP. So if you're not familiar with YAP or DAP or any of those, effectively it's contiguous code you will select so if i go yap notice i only selected those first four lines if i do dap i deleted the first four lines plus the new line to the upcoming code if i do dip i deleted all contiguous lines but not the new lines at the end so ip to maintain below white space ap to delete the white space as well dap from above will delete from white space to code to the other white space. All right, back to our original plan here. Let me go YAP to select this code. And let's just say we wanted to put this into an array. So I've pasted it in. And of course, what I can do now is I can go over 4J. What I've done is I've indented the line one time based on my indentation rules for four lines below me. So technically that was five lines total, my line plus the other four. I could have done 3J. Come on! Anyways, little capital O to put a nice white space above it. Now at this point, I want to stringify these and then say put them into an array. But first let's go like this, const data equals an array. I want to put it in each one of those datas. Let me also stop my LSP. You don't need to see all that nonsense on there. So how I probably would have originally done this is done a capital I to go to the beginning, insert mode done a little data zero uh, equals foo quotes capital a to go to the end semicolon i'm sure a lot of you probably do something pretty similar at this point i can do the old shift y or vy love selecting lines that way so fast it feels so good paste it control a to increment i'm using tmux a is my prefix so i have to double tap a Okay, I am a fan of a double, actually I hate double tapping. I hate that I have to do that, but either it was B or A and one of them's gonna get sucky. So after that, do a little DI word, VI double quotes, paste it in, repaste it, double quote, uh, do that, VI that, paste it in, yank it, paste it, increment it, DI word, uh, VI that, uh, there we go, we got it, right? That's fairly inefficient. Now I'm sure a lot of you probably said, well, wait a second, you could definitely do that better, right? This is where multi cursors is so amazing. Well, you probably would have done something like this vertical edit which is control v then capital i to go into insert mode and done something like data zero equals quote end now you mostly have it highlight dollar sign quote that okay we're kind of there but then we also have this so i'd go increment 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 right Here's what I'd probably end up doing today. I would do a little VIP, highlight the just the paragraph, little colon S slash fighting one eye Kirby, right? Yeah, everyone remember the fighting one eye Kirby, but the problem is I get all that white space at the beginning, so I'll do a slash W for the first word right there. Now I can reference this in my replace. This is awesome. So now I do something like this, data zero equals quote slash one quotes semicolon. That's pretty great. F over to the zero capital V, go up three, do a G capital or uh, control A. You can increment all of them, but notice that I did that. It was a little off, so let's try that again. Go up only to right here, G capital or control A, boom, increment them all. It's kind of a pretty fun little thing that you can do. The thing is you don't have to do a vertical edit. You can also just do a line edit and it will hit the first incrementable item in the list and do that so I can go G, A, A, and notice that it still does the same thing. If you don't use G, 
and you just do A, they'll only all increment by one. And you don't want that. You want that GAA, baby. I use this kind of stuff all the time, especially when I'm constructing unit tests, which I know right now somebody's dying. Oh, why would you write unit tests? Well, suck it, I like them. Actually, I normally use them for implementation. Um, it's just I find often that it's difficult not to use them for implementation. Lastly, a little note about jumping with opening and closing parentheses. These are really, really good, but there's a couple of things that I don't like about them. The first thing I don't like is it totally depends on what kind of code style that you're dealing with. So right here, if I were to jump, notice how big I'm jumping, right? That's kind of like a disorienting large amount of jumping. Second off, what I don't like about it is that as I walk backwards in my jump list, all of those movements are a part of it. And that's kind of annoying to really litter your jump list with that. And so I was finding that as I use that, A, people's code style would piss me off or disorient me, or B, I would have to like walk backwards a bunch of times before finding something. So I just don't use that anymore. But I do use it if I know I need to delete something like some white space or I have to jump up to a white space and then do something. Often because it's low overhead and I won't have to think about it, I'll just use it for that, pretty straightforward. Again, you'll notice that I always try to drive towards simplicity. Anytime I have to think about the exact movement I need to do, I don't like that as much, right? Like jumping up by 9K to get here, it's much, much harder than doing CI double quotes, even though there's one extra letter. Again, because CI double quotes is a motion that's universally the same. It just jumps into double quotes, cuts everything out, and then puts you into an insert mode. Whereas that other nine jump, I have to go from where I'm at, look up to what line I wanna be in, then follow that line over, right? There's a lot more cognitive overhead. Hey, if you liked what you saw, then guess what? Like this video. And to those 100,000 who've subbed, <laughs> Thank you. Lastly, if I've missed anything, if there's some really cool things you would like me to go over, make a comment down below. Cause I'll, you know, this video is largely driven off the fact that people have asked for this. Oh, and by the way, I did forget one little fun kind of little vim nugget. This one's only for the ones who have stayed. You can even make a comment down below being like, glad I walked it till the end. Let's just say you're in a really big function and you want to get to the bottom of the function. Now, there are ways with tree sitter objects and all that to be able to hop by function and all that good stuff. But if you don't have that, what you can do is you can actually use VI squirrely brace to highlight the contents of the function and then leave visual mode and boom, you're at the bottom of the function. Now where this really gets useful is if you're in like a really large array in a JSON file and you don't know how long it's gonna be, say it's like thousands of lines long, you can just simply do a VI opening bracket, highlight everything, break out of there, go up to the bracket, and then you can use percent sign to jump in betwixt the opening and closing. The percent sign, by the way, is a mwah, it's a beautiful object or beautiful motion to be, <laughs> It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful motion to have. Okay, I'm almost emotional about it. I'm sorry and I will not make a pun again. Thank you for watching. The name, the CEO, multi-billion dollar startup, Luke!